Welcome to the Draw Shops Get Genius Podcast, where we talk to today's business influencers to pick their brain and pull out their genius. It's time to get genius. Hello, and welcome to another Get Genius episode. Um, really looking forward to today's interview and for you to hear it. I'm talking to Todd Tresseter, who... Um, He's a serial entrepreneur since childhood. Uh, he's got some cool entrepreneurial stories and and pretty interesting because he did not come from that type of an upbringing at all. But um, he's a graduate from uh, UC Davis with a BA in economics and a passion for creating successful businesses, which he has most definitely done. Um, he went on to build his own wealth as a hedge fund investment manager before retiring at, get this, 35 years old. He grew his net worth from less than zero, there is a less than zero, at 23 to the point of financial independence only 12 years later. That's what we're going to be talking about on today's interview. So many things, so many questions answered and so many more to be answered. So if we didn't answer your questions that you might have about building your own wealth and creating financial freedom, retirement, saving, all of that, you can find everything at, and I mean everything, at a financialmentor.com. That is his site that has courses and it's it's all about education around building financial wealth and, and creating your own financial freedom, not based on on, you know, what you're doing in your business and, and selling your business or a big wealth event or just making more money. It's, it's really about what can you do with where you're at right now, which is really cool. But at the same time, there are some tidbits and some pieces of advice that he gives that were unique to me that I learned from on things that you can do to make more money and, and some clever things that you can do to protect your money and pay less in taxes, just lots of, of cool things. Um, We'll also talk about how how you can inspire your kids to really practice these types of of investments and saving money and and building their own wealth. Um, I'm really uh, impressed with Todd and all that he has done, especially because he's He's one of those that started at a really young age, and uh, there's there are a lot of people that are so brilliant at building their businesses and making money, and yet they might get a little bit stumped. And we talk about kind of a holistic approach to your finances and how you can build wealth and how, you know, taking a look at your everything, all different parts of your life actually all come into play and how you do one thing is probably how you do most things. <laughs> so there might be a wake up call for some of you in here, or maybe just a, an aha moment. Um, but Todd's just done a lot of, uh, amazing things with his clients and there's some pretty impressive case studies that we talk about as well. He has maintained his wealth by remaining an active investor in utilizing stati- statistical and mathematical risk management systems for investing. Again, you can learn about this on his site. Um, so through financial mentor, he teaches advanced investing and advanced retirement planning principles. He even has a program where if you were really, really, really dedicated, you could get these things in order and have your blueprint done within 30 days if you're really that focused. Otherwise, um, he has a 52 weeks to financial freedom uh, structure that he walks people through uh, all on his website as well. So um, I hope that you enjoy this interview. I would listen to the whole thing because you're really going to get to you know hear some things that go beyond conventional financial advice, uh, which I love to hear. And you're going to be hearing from a guy who really knows based on years of his own proven experience, what works and what doesn't and, and why. So enjoy. Hello, Todd. And thank you for being on the podcast today. Thanks for having me on the show, Summer. Well, you're going to hopefully answer a lot of questions for me and, and for our listeners, because you, um, you're in a field that can be quite confusing for people. Um, but before I go into all of that and our listeners have a little bit of an idea of, of what it is that you do, I'd like to hear what, where this passion for 
um, finance really and and doing these services for other people came from and why you started the business? I think because I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Um, I spent a fair amount of time. Like I went through college one quarter. Um, I had to get by on $100 for an entire quarter and I had money left over at the end of the quarter. How is that Um, possible? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Well, you know, I was living in a fraternity and so I became the house cook okay. to pay my house bills. Um, and then I didn't buy any books. I read the books in the library and, you know, made sure I ate all my meals at the fraternity when I was cooking and just spent nothing, you know, just figured out how to get by on nothing. Wow. Um, you know, so I, I didn't come from money and I have a high value on freedom, And, you know, money doesn't equal freedom, but it sure makes things a lot easier. Um, It it allows you to make choices without having to live from the right side of the menu of life, if you will. Um, So I think it was a combination of uh, having a very high value on freedom. I just don't like being penned up in any way or being restricted in any way. And that combined with not coming from money at all and having to do a lot. Like uh, when I was at UC Davis, which is where I was talking about when I was in the fraternity, um, that's known as the bicycle capital of the world. I couldn't even afford a bike. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was just, I mean, I was really, it's not that my family was dirt poor. It's just, you know, I really suffered going through college and getting by on nothing. So were there other entrepreneurs in your family or are you kind of the one? No, nobody in my family. My family comes from basic W-2, you know, workers and basic jobs. My dad was an engineer. My brother's an engineer. My other brother works for a trucking firm, not as a driver, but as a logistics guy. Um, Very, you know, normal jobs. Um, There's no background in my family for entrepreneurism at all. I just, I was just kind of this freak occurrence. Yeah. So it's hard to learn. I mean, by the way, by the way, sir, I've been that way my whole life. Okay. Like, like I started out, I, I mean, I was, it's just in me. Like I was doing, I started out with a paper route when I was a kid and I looked at, I said, well, if I bought a motorcycle, I could do three paper routes as fast as I could walk one. And plus then I can ride a cool motorcycle. Right. And so bam, turn around, use the profits from that to buy the motorcycle, which then allowed me to run three paper routes and make three times as much money in the same time. Yeah. You know, I mean, like that was just always my gig. I was always figuring out how to do it more efficiently and more profitably. And, you know, like I, I started, I was working a service station cause I was like a, a, an auto mechanic as a kid. I could fix anything. And, uh, I was working at a gas station and pretty soon I became the weekend mechanic. And then I became a manager for this whole chain of stations. And I was hiring and firing the kids from my high school. Wow. I love that. And what's really interesting to me is that you weren't seeing that with your parents, within your immediate family. So to be able to pick up on that on such a young age and to have that drive and actually understand what it means to work for yourself and to scale that and to have freedom, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, thanks. It's just just who I am. You know, it's like, I'm not trying to be impressed. It's just how I am. It's how I'm wired. Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of incredible entrepreneurs out there and they, they are really great at making money and building their business. And ironically, a lot of them are not a lot. I don't know how many, but I, I've, I've met some that are not so great at, you know, building their personal wealth yeah. and their personal financial freedom. They can build this business. And but it's and I don't you know, sometimes it's you wonder, is it what's blocking them? What's what's the fear? What's I don't know. Is it lack of knowledge? What is your experience with that? Well, because I actually have a term for it. It's called wealth translation. OK. Um, and so they're different skill sets. Right. Wealth creation is one. There's three essential skill sets to becoming financially independent. One is wealth creation. The other is wealth translation. And then the other is investment return. And so there's three different components and you have to be good at at least two of the three. It depends on what path you use to build wealth. And so uh, the example you're giving, an entrepreneur becomes good at wealth creation. Mm -hmm. They're building, they're creating wealth through their business. They're creating success through their business, but then they have no idea how to translate it over. But very common error for entrepreneurs is they get caught in this idea that 
their business is their only asset. It's an, it's an asset and it's an important one. And it's possibly the one they'll get the single highest return on investment on. So I'm not trying to belittle it in any way, but on the same, you know, same thing, you have to be responsible and you have to figure out how to translate wealth out of the business into your personal balance sheet. And so there's a variety of skills involved in that and they just overlook it. You know, they're just blind to it because they're just thinking, well, if I just grow my business and then, you know, it's kind of that, like the millionaire myth, you know, everybody thinks about financial independence and they think about the millionaire myth, like, right, if I can just get a million bucks and I can tell F you to my boss or whatever. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's called, I call it the millionaire myth because it's, you know, it's not a million bucks that it takes to do that. And then the entrepreneurial myth is the liquidity event, right? So you build the business, build the business, build the business, work, 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 work. And it's all for this big payday, often never, never land future at the end of the rainbow called the liquidity event where you sell it and get paid a ton of money or somebody comes along and buys you out or whatever. And what people miss is that they should be translating all along that journey into their personal balance sheet. And then if they get a liquidity event, fine, it's just gravy on the top, right? It's the icing on the top of the cake. Right. Um, But if they don't, then they're still very wealthy as a result. And so I like to call it A and B planning, right? So, or heads and tails, heads you win, tails you win. Uh, Because a lot of people don't get a liquidity event. They build the business, build the business, build the business, and then something goes wrong. Yeah. And then they never get the liquidity event and the rainbow never forms at the end, you know? Totally. So what are some of the things, and I know know this is like a, a really, a much longer conversation, but what are some of the things that people can do to build that now starting now if somebody has you know no retirement plan no like no kind of savings or anything but they've got a pretty good business going on what what's their next step well the very things you listed they didn't have right yeah. so you would want to i mean one of the no brainers unless you're you know pushing 50 or 60 and even then it's generally fairly smart to do is to max out tax deferred retirement savings mm-hmm. Um, cause the thing about money is it's, it's, it's like time. They're both kind of, I'll call it amorphous or they shape to the vessel they're put in. And so, you know, people can find happiness on less if they only have less cause you figure out how to make it work. And then when you have more magically, you spend more. And so it's this kind of amorphous thing that, that shapes. And so if you just shovel the money out automatically to the retirement plans, Um, then it builds and it compounds in the background and you really don't miss it. Um, at least that's my experience and that's the experience of my clients. I'm I'm totally with you. It's true. It's like, you don't even count it. It's not even there. Yeah. It just just, comes out automatically. You never saw it. Yep. Exactly. If you don't, yeah, if you don't see it, you don't miss it. And then it builds in the background and the sooner you start that, the better, right? I mean, but everybody's told you that I'm not telling anything new on that one. The other thing that, uh, entrepreneurs can do, uh, it's a very smart strategy is you acquire real estate that the business operates from. Um, So you buy it personally, then the business rents it from you. So I'll give you an example. I had an attorney client. He had a very successful practice, a whole bunch of attorneys underneath him, legal assistants, secretaries. It was a large office. It was a very successful practice. And he loved his work. He had gotten to a point he could just do the work, only the parts of the work he liked, he, he did very high level trial work, specialty work. Yeah. And all the mundane work was done by the rest of the staff. And he loved his work, very successful, but wasn't translating well. And so one of the strategies we did was we found a large uh, office building and his entire firm rented it from him. But what they did was interesting. It was actually like four times as large as he needed so his firm signed for it and became responsible for the rent, and then the firm subletted out the other spaces. And so essentially, his firm, as long as it was profitable and in existence, essentially guaranteed positive cash flow on that personal real estate holding. And that building was large enough that um, it basically became his retirement. Like there, I mean, he could fund his entire re- retirement off the one property. Wow, I like that. That's definitely something different. We haven't talked yeah, so about what on you here. Do, <laughs> what you do when you do that is you're translating earned income to um, tax advantaged income, right? Because it's rent and royalty income. Yeah. And then it's net of depreciation also. So there's a lot of tax efficiency. And this goes into this concept of wealth translation I was talking about earlier mm-hmm. about how do you get more of that income over into your personal balance sheet as an asset that produces additional income. 
And so that's just one example. And there's tax advantages involved. Um, there's just, you know, once you have that asset, like, let's just call this a million dollar building. Now that million dollar building is appreciating over time, you know, whereas before, what would you be doing with that money? You know, a lot of it would just get spent to him in terms of payroll, which would then be taxed and he would only get a percentage of it. So it was was very, very efficient strategy. Um, that's just one of many. What, what, what's the typical situation of somebody coming to work to work with you, or is it really varied? Well, you're you're making an assumption that I still accept coaching clients. I sold out long ago, okay. and so um, what I've done now that I was very blessed. The demand was way in excess of what I could manage, and I actually got to a point of burnout just trying to help people. Yeah, um, and I I finally just had to shut it down. I shut it down. I don't know three four years ago, and I still have enough clients that have stayed on because they just never leave. Yeah, <laughs> that that as a result, I'm, you know, I've still got a full practice. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm building Todd in a box. So I've got a seven steps to seven figures course series, uh, where I take the, what's happened is over the years, I got to backtrack a little bit, Summer. Is that okay? Of course. Okay. Well, I started this originally as just a little boutique coaching business and it was on a challenge for my wife. I, you know, I had a lot of real specialized knowledge that I had developed that worked for me. I had retired, quote unquote, retired at age 35. And that was a long time ago. That was over 20 years ago as we record this. And I had this specialty knowledge and, you know, my wife was like, why don't you do something with it? You know? And so originally I started financial mentor back in 1998 and it was just going to be a little boutique coaching practice. Well, I, I did that for years. I mean, like a decade Uh, Before I did any more with it, it was just a little boutique coaching practice. But what the coaching clients taught me was that there's seven structured steps that everybody goes through to build financial independence. And not everybody goes through every step, right? But there's seven possible steps. Some people already know certain ones, like you may be really good at habitudes of wealth, which is step number two. You may already have your financial foundation in place. That's step number one. So different people come to me at different points in the journey, but there's seven sequential steps you go through to achieve financial independence, whether you do them with me or somebody else or on your own. And so I started realizing that, realizing there was a pattern. And that's about the time my, my coaching practice was sold out. Um, and so now I'm building out that knowledge into a course series. The only course available now happens to parallel with this conversation. It's step three, which is how you literally design your life to result in wealth. Um, so it's very different from a traditional investment plan or financial plan. It's how you connect the three asset classes to to your personal characteristics to create a plan that will actually work. It'll actually produce wealth, hopefully earlier than old. So, okay. So I'm looking at your, your site and there's also, I see a a free wealth blueprint. Is that still active? That's something, yeah, that's something I give away a couple things to build relationship with people when they sign up for my quote unquote newsletter, which is just updates from the site. Okay. So they get a free, they get a free book. It's called 18 essential lessons of a self-made millionaire. Um, and it goes through a lot of the principles and lessons I had to learn to achieve financial independence and that I've noticed are common among my coaching clients. And then, so I give that away, that's free. And then I also give away a free course. It's called 52 Weeks to Financial Freedom. And what that does is that gives a big overview of the seven steps to seven figures course series. Okay. Um, so it's like a broad, it, it's a broad sampling. So you get, you can see the structure, you can see the framework, you can see how all the pieces fit together from the free course. And it's easy enough that people can go step by step and get things in order if that's the right word. <laughs> yeah, they, well, it goes by subject relevance. So what, what it is, Summer, the way it works is each step solves a specific problem in the financial freedom journey. Okay. Right? So like step two is about how you have habits and attitudes that result in success. Okay? And this was something I didn't even know existed, right? Because I happen to have very successful habits and attitudes in my own life. And so I just assumed everybody else did, right? That's what we do. We project our reality onto other people. And then when I started coaching other clients, I realized, oh no, this is a big hole. I mean, there's people won't get anywhere unless they get these right habits and attitudes. And so I developed a whole course and that solves that problem. And then like step three, how you design a wealth plan that'll actually work, right? That's the one that's available publicly now. That course came, actually it came out of a marketing 
uh, seminar that I was doing. I was trying to learn how to market the business. And one of the homework assignments was to go interview your former clients and find out what they valued most about you. And this thing I totally took for granted, which was these wealth plans I'd created with these clients, I just assumed everybody did it that way, right? <laughs> yeah. And they come back to me and there's like, oh, that wealth plan you did. And this would be clients I haven't talked to in years, right? And they're like, that wealth plan you did with me, I'm still working off it. It's still working. And I've shown it to family members. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. You know, that kind of that kind of reaction. I'm like, oh, okay. I had no idea that was valuable. I just assumed that was obvious, like common sense. That's the way you got to do it. It turned out it wasn't common sense at all. Nobody was doing it that way. Right. Um, so that's step three and it solves that problem. You literally can't coach somebody to wealth without that wealth plan in place because it sets the context for everything you're working on. And then step four as an example is how you take massive action on that plan. So once you have a plan, then, you know, it's basically just a cute little document unless you take action on it. Right. Yeah. And so what happens is when you start taking action, that's when all your personal issues really come out, you know, all your obstacles, success, all your limiting beliefs, other, you know, life problems that you have that keep you from taking massive action. And so step four is about how you just break through and take massive action on your plan. And then step five is now you're taking massive action. You've got your plan. Guess what? You're getting wealthy. So now what you need is step five, which is expectancy investing. And it shows you how to invest properly using expectancy investing principles is very different from what's commonly taught. And so, as you can see, each plan sequentially builds on top of the other. They're all like step by step by step as you go through the wealth process, wealth building process is what you're going to go through. So, and this is all in the 52 weeks to financial freedom. Yeah. Is that correct? That, okay. Yeah. Little chunks of it and overview and frameworks and things like that are taught in there. Obviously, I can't do the whole thing in an autoresponder series, right? Right, right. I mean, like if you just take the, the wealth building course... I have to remove part of the sales letter. Part of the sales letter says you get it done in 30 days. There are people who can get it done in 30 days, but they treat it like a, a job and they go in there and they crunch. I mean, there's a lot of material in there. Um, so anyway, you know, each one of these courses, like the, the step three course took me two years to build. Yeah, I bet. I mean, it, <laughs> it's just, you know, these things are formidable. This is, this is like a university curriculum on wealth building. Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, financial advisors and mentors and, and people that are out there that offer advice and plans and, and blueprints and all of that. How, talking to you as an entrepreneur, how did you set yourself apart and be the person that they're going to trust? Because when it's something that's unfamiliar, and I would, I would guess, I'm sure there were people that you worked with that were familiar and wanted that extra expertise, but there's a lot of people I would imagine that come to you going, I don't even know where to begin. Um, and I've been, you know, there's so many people around me telling me this is what I need to do. How did, how did you as an entrepreneur take this kind of an industry and become the person that they're going to trust? Well, there's a, there's a couple of things I did differently. So one, I came out of the hedge fund industry. So I actually had a deep financial background. Okay. A lot of the people out there holding themselves as gurus or experts do not have a deep financial background. Um, so that's where I cut my teeth and learned and proved things out. I did a lot of research. I spent 12 years researching investment models at the hedge fund, proving what works and what doesn't. That's where I developed a lot of theories I teach, which is what makes my teachings different. Then in 98, and I'm trying to give you a context for this so that you can see that this stuff was not common back then. Yeah. In 98, back when people were still dealing with full service brokers and things like that, um, I started the business as a pure financial education business. I don't sell any investment products. So you're asking how to, what sets me apart? How do people trust me? Uh, I have nothing to sell ex except education. So if you don't get great value from the education more than, more than it costs you, then I'll be out of business, right? Cause you won't yeah. buy additional things and you won't learn stuff. And so it's a pure financial education model. I'd sell no investment products. That was another thing. And then the other thing too is that um, my perspective on it is a little different in that I've actually built wealth in all three categories. So there's three asset classes that you build wealth in, which is paper assets, which is the stocks, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs that a broker can sell you. Um, so I call that paper assets just as a broad asset class. Direct ownership of real estate. And then uh, business entrepreneurship. Those are the three asset classes. 
and I've built wealth in all three of them, which is quite rare. Wow. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, like you said, that is that is a huge difference because I think what are you know, you probably have knowledge on this and I'm sure you've educated people in terms of actually, you know, purchasing services and you know there's there's people that charge various amounts when when you're working with an actual um financial advisor what are some of the things that people should look out for and be wary of well i've actually got several posts up on the site you can link to under okay. due diligence if you search for due diligence on my site um, I've got things about, uh, there's several posts that go through that in detail about the five things you must ask a financial advisor before you do business with them. I have a whole book on investment fraud detection, which includes how to detect faulty advice. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of material on the website. Um, I mean, we could do a whole podcast on it. You do. I mean, you have like, you, you, ha you answer a lot of questions, and I, I was looking at that earlier, which is fantastic. You have the calculators as well because people want to know how much do I need, um, what will yeah, I so have the, if I put this away. Yeah, yeah. so the calculators, those that comes from the fact that um, all, all wealth is math, right? Finance is math in the end, and wealth growth is math. It's governed by two equations, the expectancy equation and the future value equation. So future value equation brings in the time component expectancy is your basic compound return as most people think of it, but it's a little bit more complex than that. And it's a very important concept because the difference between expectancy and probability and compound returns is very important. Um, so anyway, those two equations govern everything now, but a lot of people aren't math um, like I am, right? So they, they're uncomfortable with math or they're math phobics. And so what I did was I created one of the largest collections of financial calculators on the internet. There's 80 of them up there. And, uh, and so people can have the math done for them. So if you don't understand future value equation, there's a future value calculator. If you want to understand how to compare, uh, you know, an income stream to a current asset and how you equate both values, there's a, there's a, uh, um, annuity calculator up there. You know, I got the, the ultimate retirement calculator pretentiously named, um, but I, I program that just specifically for how I teach um, how you design a wealth plan. And it's an iterative process that uses scenario analysis. And so, you know, th this calculator has very specific functionality in it that is, makes it so you can uh, actively plan your retirement or your financial independence um, without having to follow certain assumptions that go in other calculators. It, it allows you to bring in income streams and you know, post-retirement income streams and used real estate and all kinds of things that those guys don't want you to use. Can you tell us some really cool case studies or experiences with people that you've worked with? Because I think people can get shocked at how much they can actually have in, say, 20 years by putting not so much away. So maybe I want to get people excited and about starting on this if they haven't already. Yeah, I think the key is to understand that you can build wealth with three asset classes without just saving your way to wealth. Everybody thinks that, you know, that's that's what I call a traditional wealth plan, which is just, you know, save your way to wealth. I call it the save more, spend less plan. Yeah. And that's the traditional plan. So that's slow. That takes an entire career to achieve financial independence. Um, or you can do it shorter time period if you go through extreme frugality relative to your income. Right. So if you only spend a tiny, tiny percentage of your income, you can achieve financial independence much faster that way. That happens to be the way I did it. So I did it with paper assets because I was a hedge fund investor. I understood how to compound wealth in paper assets. And then because I was a hedge fund manager, I was making a whole lot of money. Yeah. Um, but I was basically just out of college. I was still leaving, le leading a college kid lifestyle. And so I just didn't spend any of it. And so I just socked it away and became financially independent really fast. Um, so that's one path. It's the slow path unless you go extreme frugality. You can go a lot faster if you use um, the business and the real estate asset class. So as an example, I had – that's what you're asking for. I'm sorry. I just had to set the stage for it. No, that's fine. Um, so I had a client whose wife was a very successful realtor in a town where the real estate happened to be positive cash flow. And he wanted to be a stay-at-home dad and because she was kind of the career woman of the of the couple – and so the way they did it was he built a little real estate empire when she would find unusually good rental properties 
because she knew the market and she knew values. She would find unusually good deals. And then he would run the real estate portfolio while raising the kids. And it didn't take them very long at all. It was only a few short years before they were financially independent. Um, wow. I'm trying to think. I gave you the the attorney. He came to me with a really high income, very successful business, no concept on how to translate it. Um, as I told you, he did the office building. He also um, brought his wife into the business um, in terms of both payroll as well as um, retirement plans that allowed them to sock away an extraordinary amount of money, um, fairly quickly. Um, so that's another example. I'm just trying to think I had a woman who, uh, came to me single and she wanted to be married. Um, one of the, this, this sounds like it's coming out of left field. One of the funny things about financial coaching is how you do one thing is how you do all things. Like how you do small things is how you do big things. Yeah. Right. Because all these things are stages on which we're acting out our stuff in life, right? So you have the relationship stage, you have the finance stage, you have the business entrepreneurship stage. You know, you've got all these stages on which you act out your life stuff. And yet it's always you acting out. And so it's always the same stuff that shows up on every stage. And so when you change one stage, you change them all. And so in her work with me, um, she raised her income extraordinarily. She went from... Um, yeah, I'm not allowed to say, but let, let's just say, you know, in the 30 to $40 an hour range. Um, and in a few short years, she was up to 150 an hour. And she also had a staffing agency where she was pulling another two, 300 bucks an hour off of staff where she was placing staff within these large companies. Um, and so, and then on top of that, she ended up married. I'm so happy you said that because I think that's so true. And it, they're not they're not separate things it's like how you do you, it, like you said if if somebody's a little bit messy with their money or a little bit kind of freaking out a lot you'll see that that's how they're operating in their business or in their relationships or with their kids or with their it's so it's so true yeah i used to get feedback all the time from clients about how oh wow todd like the stuff you taught me you know like they would tell me the butterfly effect right you know you know the butterfly effect where yes like, you know, butterfly flaps its wings one place in it. So they would tell me about how the messages I'd shared with them and the insights they'd learned, how it would resonate out. Like they'd teach their kids that, who then taught their teacher that, who then taught the whole classroom that, and, you know, on and on and on. And you're like, okay, all right, that's interesting. Or in that wealth building course, I was telling you about the step three course. Um, I was surprised, like this stuff still catches me by surprise, even though I teach it, right? Yeah. Um, I, I was surprised. I started getting feedback from from clients in the course. They're saying, "Oh my God, I know I didn't buy it for this reason, and you didn't sell it, to, and you didn't say this does this, but this has totally helped our marriage for the first time. Me and my wife are on the same page, you know. Because what they do is they go through the course lessons together, and they start having a lot of conversations about the material. Because typically, what will happen is one spouse will drive the financial freedom machine, and the other spouse will not really be into it. Yeah. And, and so, um, when they go through the course together and they work through the goals together and then the spouse that tends to lag is suddenly gets their eyes open to some of the material, then all of a sudden they're on the same page. So it's, it's turned into a marriage therapy course without well, even trying. It totally does. And I think with any relationship and, you know, whether it's with a business partner, with a spouse, with you know, whatever relationship it is, whenever there is that transparency, it's the fear of facing something is gone. You know, it's it's often the anticipation or the anxiety about well, what am I going to find out? What am I going to find out? And people are so scared about actually looking at their financial situation or a relationship situation. So they, it's kind of like you just keep avoiding it and avoiding it. But when you finally actually face it, even if it's not what you hoped it would be, it's still it's at least, OK, I know what I'm dealing with here and now I can actually have a plan and having a plan feels so much better than not having a plan. Yeah, I'm agreeing with everything you said. I'll add one more thing to it. And that is that, you know, financial freedom is a funny thing. It's not like there's anybody that doesn't want it. Exactly. <laughs> right? So, right. So if one spouse isn't supporting the goals, it's not because it's not a desirable goal or that they don't want the goal. It's that there's some, almost always there's a lack of understanding or an old belief structure holding them back or yeah. some, there's something there. And so what happens is the course tends to unearth that and tends to bring it forth. And that's what kind of opens things up for, for these people. So 
you know, typically the spouse that isn't on board, it's not that they're a bad person. I, I, I have a belief, which is, you know, 98% of people are good and there's 2% that are just real nutheads. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so odds are very high, you know, you didn't marry a nuthead, you married a really good person and that the whole reason they're not on board with you is that there's just, there's some lack of knowledge. There's some misunderstanding. There's some belief structure. There's something there that is causing a different behavior. And so you're noticing the behavior, but you're not finding the cause. And that's what these things can source out. You know, like the course can source out is it'll flesh out that cause through a lot of the exercises in there. Right. Well, I think that's so important. And I love that you're bringing it's, it's like a very holistic approach, which is so important. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the end, you know, nobody achieves financial freedom because they want more money, right? You, you do it because you want what you think it'll bring you, which is a higher quality of life. Absolutely. Yes. You know, so it's never about the money. It's always about first and foremost, it's about quality of life. So these things aren't separate at all. How can parents inspire their children to start these kind of practices early on? Live it. Just by living it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've got to, I mean, you know, I've got two kids. They're, they're teenagers. One's almost an adult. Um, and as we record this 2017, I got to date it. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause they, they, they're grown fast. Yep. Um, you know, I've, I've observed what my kids, uh, learn in their behaviors and it's totally in response to our behaviors in the household and how we run things here. You can say all you want, but words mean nothing. Um, I have a, I have a favorite, uh, slogan. It's judged by results, often harsh, always fair. And so, you know, so I can do that, say that one more time. Judged by results, often harsh, always fair. Yeah. And so what it is, is, you know, the results of your life are like the mirror. They're telling you, um, what's really true about you. It's like somebody will come to me and they'll say, you know, you know, I don't have a problem saving. Great. You know, how much do you have? You know, Oh, I got about a hundred thousand dollars and how much do you make? Oh, about 300,000 a year. And you know, you've been doing that for 10 years. Eh, you probably do have a savings problem, you know? And so there's like, you can look at the numbers, you can look at the facts and then look at the end results and they tell you way more than words ever will. Yeah. And what's particularly telling is the contrast between the words and the results. Um, that to me is particularly instructive and so anyway, kids do the same thing. They're not dumb. Kids are really smart, actually. And so they observe your life and they see what's working and what isn't. So if you're setting a bad example, maybe even inadvertently, like maybe you're super successful, right? But you're never home. You're not involved with them. You haven't shown them love. You haven't taken trips. With them. You haven't been a good parent. Well, they're going to look at that and have a negative response to business success then. Yeah. You know, because they're going to understand the pain they incurred from having an absentee father, as an example. So, you know, this stuff's hard. It's, you know, to to balance it all out and make it all work. It's not a it's not a slam dunk. You know, these things you got to really work with it. Oh, absolutely. Well, I appreciate so much all that you've you've shared with us today. I feel like there is so so much more and so many questions to be answered, and there's a ton. I mean, you have so many fabulous resources on on your site, which is um, for our listeners, financialmentor.com. And we'll have the link to that and also some of the uh, the due diligence that you were talking about, because that tends to be a big question on who to work with, how to what kind of questions to ask. Um, but you just I mean, there's like everything on here. It's fantastic. Um, the the steps that you were talking about before and, and just being guided through that so awesome. So I just, I appreciate so much all that you shared with us today. And I, I hope that you'll all check this out. Financialmentor.com. You were awesome, Todd. Thank you. Thank you, Summer. Thanks for having me on the show. Good talking with you. You too. Thank you for listening to today's Get Genius. You can learn more about The Draw Shop at www.thedrawshop.com on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Your home for kick butt custom whiteboard marketing videos. Your ideas come to life. Thanks for listening. Please share, comment, and make any suggestions for future genius guests.